Now it's being recorded. I thought I pressed that button. That's what happens when I hop right into it. All right, for the people who are just now watching this, we clone Lecture 17 into my computer. Sorry you didn't get to see that, but feel free to watch Lecture 16 if you want to go over it. Now we're into announcements. Oh, but they never got to see the GIF. All right, all right, I go see the GIF. Look at that. It's like a little dog. Look at it. Oh my gosh, that's such a fail. All right, on to announcements. Lecture five, like I said, it is due August 5th. This is not gonna be a drop day, so don't be worried about that. Um, Michael, also, thank you for reminding me to do that recording. Um, so yes, it is due the 5th. After today, you will have all the tools necessary to complete that assignment. So fetch and JSON are the last pieces of the puzzle before you are fully capable of reading that. So feel free, if you haven't already, start taking a look at lecture, um, uh, not lecture, at assignment number five and get ready for that. So that leads me to my next point, because I've gotten a few questions about this. Unit one drop date, when is the next drop date and what does it entail? The next drop date is at the end of this unit. At the end of this unit, we have six total assignments that need to be graded and completed and passing in order to move on to unit number two. In addition, all of the exercises and studios must be submitted and at least attempted in order for you to be eligible to go to unit two as well. The assignments must be passing, but in addition, those studios and exercises have to be attempted. Everything has to be in in order to move on to unit two. So if you were looking for exactly what is that cutoff, that is it. At the bare minimum, all the assignments have to be in and passing. That grader has to have a green check mark in order for it to be eligible to move on to unit two. So there you go. Um, continuing on, this is actually a lie. There will be a studio review tonight and I apologize, I didn't change this in time. We did find a TF. Bree will be taking over for tonight during studio review. So please come back here at 8 p.m. I apologize that there is, is, is studio review tonight. Bree was very kind to step up and do that. I will be gone due to a work thing. So I will not be enjoying myself. So enjoy uh, studio review with Bree. I will be putting out another video. Like last time, um, I wasn't able to make it either, but if you haven't looked already on YouTube, there is myself going over the studio there too. I'll be doing that. And I know I haven't gotten to annoy you all for two whole studio reviews now. So to make it up to you, I got you a present. I'm going to be doing office hours on Wednesday, right? Isn't that the best present? You get to spend time with me outside of class. So I will be hosting office hours, feel free to come in here. You can talk to me about assignment five, anything that you were doing pre previously, but those office hours will be 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. If this doesn't work for your schedule, I completely understand that we all have lives. So don't forget there's that one-on-one -on, -one on Calendarly. If you wanna sign up with time on me, with me, we can work one-on-one uh, -on -one with that. So if 3.30 to 5.30 or five doesn't work for you, Calendarly is your other option. Otherwise, of course, reach out to your TSTAs and your fellow colleagues. All right, any final questions before we jump into this? Oh, you all are so quiet. Someone say hi. Someone talk to me. Someone say, I'm okay, Kyle. I'm all good. I'm okay, Kyle. Don't Thank tell you. me what to do. Thank you. <laughs> Touche also, in my face. Actually, all I right. do have a question for you, Kyle. <laughs> What's going on, Jason? Go going on with the drop date. Uh, you said the assignments and what else needed to be done by the, the drop date? The assignments need to be, to be turned in and graded as in they have to have a green check mark so they have to be passing as well as all the studios and exercises need to be turned in and at least attempted okay you be eligible to move on okay so what yeah drop date so what is it, when is the drop date it's at the uh the exact date is i will have to get that from clark and clark if you're on the call let me know i'll get that drop date to you sooner rather than later what was it 816. 816. Last time I saw it, 816. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, 816. It will be after assignment six is due. Um, so assignment six is due. I think there's like a small grace period to get everything in. But about that assignment six, everything should be turned in, uh, studios, exercises, and those assignments. So, um, but as it gets closer to that drop date, you'll see more and more about it on announcements. Um, but I just want to give you more of a radar for it. But great questions. Does that help everyone? So, so, so okay. will you be dropped if you don't uh, have the exercises done? They need to be at least turned in and attempted. So, 
that of course will come up to Clark as the final person, but at the bare minimum, all the assignments have to be passing and green check marked. The studios and exercises have to be shown to be attempted and at least turned in with something. If you have what too many- you get, um, What if you get the extended time? If you have accommodations, that's between you, the success coach and Clark. So you'll have to talk to them individually. But I'm just saying okay. what I was given by Clark. So yeah, you'll also, have to make sure- I the auto grader is not working for my HTML me something. For some reason, it doesn't even go through the text. So I look, or so it looks like I'm part of a group message with you. So I think you're, there we're waiting a little bit of feedback from you. So go ahead and take a look at those messages. Yeah. And supply um, that back to Shaw that message. Told me that they would, Shaw told me that they would do it manually. Okay. Well, so if that's what you have worked out with them, then I would say talk to them one-on-one -on -one about specifically what you need to do. I wouldn't know anything on my end, so I apologize, Amy. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All right. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, additional questions, feel free to direct message me, direct message Clark. Um, but I did want to just give you that because I have been getting some questions. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and start hopping into lecture here. We're going to, of course, start with some questions to get our gears going after the weekend. And my first thing, I just want to bring in this here and just talk to me because again, we had to get started quick. I didn't get to catch up with any of you all. Just tell me this. What language is this? CSS. CSS. Very good. And more specifically, out of our CSS things, what does this one look like? What kind of styling is it? ID. ID. It is an ID styling. Very good. Because we know that by the hashtag. The hashtag is going to show a CSS ID styling. Very good. And so we can only use this if our HTML tag attribute ID has the name my style in it. Awesome. Awesome. How about this one? Looking pretty. Where's this going to fit here? A class. class. It's going to be a class, and we know that because it has the dot, the period there to start it out with. That's how classes are going to go. All right, one more. How about this one? Section. What is this going to fit into? Tag. 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 Very good. And I mean, it's the only one we haven't chosen, so it's like, all right, got to choose A. Very good. All right, just for fun, though, you can tell me what this one is. Uh, it's a neat okay. title inside of, uh, it's a child CSS. Very good. The div. It is a, it is wow. a child class CSS yep. styling. Very good. It technically is a class because we have that dot in there, but this class neat title can only be used on div tags. This is another powerful part of CSS. If we want to make something very specific for a specific tag with a specific class type or class name, this is how we would do that. So awesome job. Yes, class styling, but it's with a specific tag in mind. Very cool. All right, let's keep going. And let me make sure I'm, I don't have my screen in there. Um, <laughs> uh, when will Unit 2 start? Christopher, I will have to get back to you about Unit 2 starting. I don't actually have any of that. Sorry, I'm just seeing that question now. All right, let's keep on keeping on here. So. Let's keep going with some now HTML inside CSS, bring it in just a typical HTML document. Tell me this, how would I add a title of the weather station to this page? What tag am I gonna use? Title. 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 Very good, starting out strong, exactly right. Yeah, title, and then inside of there, we're gonna put the weather station, very good. All right, how would I add the JS JavaScript file, my code to this page? What tag are we gonna use? Script. Script. Very good. Script. Script. I'll start you out. Give me more things, though. I need a little bit more to bring this in. Doors. SRC. Awesome. Awesome. I thought this was going to trip people up. Everyone's like, Shh, Kyle, come on. Give me something harder. All right. For sure, I will absolutely give you something harder. How about if I wanted to add styles.css to this page? What am I going to add here? Link. Cue the Jeopardy music. Link. 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 Very Link. Good. L with an L. Link. Yes. And then, oh, I already gave the oh, rel, and then give me one more. I need one more attribute. Href. Href, very good. Yeah. We actually need to specify the file. Okay, also, hashtag wrong answer there. Not my code.js, it should be styles.css. It's not a <laughs> JS file, it's a CSS. Sorry, it's a small <laughs> little typo there. But very good, we need to use that link tag in order to get our style sheets in. Awesome, awesome. All right. Are we, uh, are our gears going now? Are we, like, are we churning a little bit? Are we thinking? Are we ready? 
It's like, meh. Everyone's like kind of bored. Like, come on. Come on. Give me something here. All right. I know it's Monday. Fine. <laughs> I'll just take, I'll just take the grumpy gills. Whatever. All right. Let's talk about the World Wide Web then. I'm bringing your computer, the one thing that you're looking at, and I personally love to death, not your computer, my computer, just saying. But all right, your computer, you want to go to a website. Who or what do you talk to if you want to go to a website? What is holding all of your information, everything on your website? What is server? Server. Very good, a server. That is exactly who we talk to, that server. So when we type in that address, we need to go and talk to that server, but what do we send over to talk to it? What is it called? Request. Say that again. Request. I heard it now. It's called a request. It's called a request here, and I am hearing some background noise. Um, it is a request. Very good. Yes, and we send over our URL to that server. Who can tell me, though, what kind of request this is? Get. Get. A get. That's a get. Oh my gosh, I am really not giving you guys anything to talk today. Okay, yes, it is a get. Fine, just for bonus, what's the other request then, Smarty Pants? Post. Post. All right, fine. All right, very good. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Okay, so on the server, I'm assuming it, anybody can tell me this one then. What is the server called on that side? Oh, this is just tough. I can't, I'm just going to give it to you. It's server side. We already know that. We put side and server <laughs> together. Yeah, you got it. All right, the server side is going to take that get request and it's going to return you something. What exactly is this thing that it's returning with? Response. Response. Oh, the response. Very good. And inside that response, we're going to bring that HTML with it. And hence, we'll show up our HTML on our computer. So this is the World Wide Web in a nutshell. So this is how we get back websites. So essentially, this is everything that we talked about and how the web is truly ran. But one thing we haven't really asked ourselves is, okay, what if we need to get data back for our website? You know, today's modern applications, if you're interacting with the website, not all of that data is just there at once. What do I mean by that? If you go to, say, uh, your sports, you know, like your, your most recent sports thing, if you go to even Google and just see automatic updates of your sports game, that page is not refreshing the data is being refreshed on the page. So data is being pulled into websites all the time. The same with weather, things that are constantly changing, that data is constantly streaming in, even Netflix sometimes. As you watch your stuff show or you see new recommendations, data is being poured into that application or you're being refreshed. So exactly, if we're just talking about weather specifically, how does, whether the information get to that site because it's not always just sitting there in your HTML. Well, that's where this new thing comes into play. And it's things that you talk to every day without you even knowing them. It's a certain kind of server. And that certain kind of server is named an API. APIs, Application Programming Interface, is a technology, is a type of server, is a type of thing out there in the web that holds information and allows you to request it and responds back with it. So with this request, because that's how we always start talking, we're gonna send it just like how we usually do with our HTML or if we're just trying to get a web page. In this case, we're gonna send over a get. We wanna get information. Nothing here has changed with our response type. We're gonna get information. Now, one thing I do wanna point out here, and it's very, very important because I'm gonna be using this word literally just subconsciously that if you see this weather.json which you should have in your exercises or just the previous um just the previous reading for the fetch and api portion you'll see this weather.json in this long thing this here right here is called what i'm going to be calling an endpoint you'll hear a lot of things about api endpoints those are what drives the data driven web are these endpoints here so yes if you hear me say endpoint that is what i mean those little links that are talking to an api so when we send over that request to get information from the endpoint, as always, we're gonna send, or the API is gonna send over a response. Now, is that response gonna be blank? No, it's gonna have something in it, something of value, AKA the data that we've requested. In the case or the example that we're talking about right now, we're gonna be sending over weather information. So when that data comes back to us from the API, we can utilize it to display the updated information on our website. 
This right here is the other part of the World Wide Web, the data-driven side. We have one portion to show us a pretty picture, to show us a nice website. But the website's only nice as long as it has up-to-date information. Hence, we used APIs to get that information, and we rely on this data to actually use to make our websites of value to our users. But let's explore right now. And before I continue, I'm gonna actually go read. I'm sorry, I don't have my Slack thing up right there. I need to start any questions about this. Feel free to start typing in the lecture channel. Kyle, can you look at lecture chat? I'm confused on if exercises and studios have to be submitted. Ashton, they do have to be submitted. They have to be attempted and submitted. So if you have any questions, feel free to direct message me too. Um, Clark will also help also. Um, so any questions about this portion specifically before we dive a little bit deeper into the data, to the data side, anything at all? All right, well, we're gonna keep diving then. Hold your breath, here we go. Let's talk about the data that's responded back to us. We're gonna bring back that response we just saw. The API is responding back to our computer because we requested that weather information. The response is very, very important. It's gonna come back as a giant thing of uh, just a lot of data. A lot of data comes back in a response, but we're gonna care about one thing, one thing only, the, the package. Like if you ever like download, or like you ever order something from Amazon, you care about the package. You don't care how it got there. Just give me the information. Just give me my, what did I just order? I mean, no, I think I ordered a thing of twine. But anyway, whatever, you want the thing out of the package. We're gonna be talking about that today. And the thing that comes out of the package in a lot of the examples we're gonna be working with, it's called JSON, J-S-O-N, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Now, it doesn't really matter what it stands for. The fact is that, that this JSON stuff is what runs the web, at least a majority of it. It is one of the most popular formats to send information back in a response, and sometimes even sending it in a request, but we're not gonna really talk about that. What I'm trying to get at is JSON, this format, is extremely, extremely important. Hence why we've already kind of shown you what this looks like at the very beginning of class. We just didn't call it JSON because it's not always JSON. It's something very close to it. And you've seen this a little bit before. Just for an example here, I'll show you this. This is kind of just a weather thing. You've seen this again in your readings as exercises. Temps 90, status partly cloudy, zip code, whatever. Now, what does this kind of look like? You see a left-hand side with a word, all unique, split by a colon, and then some kind of value, sometimes numbers, sometimes strings. And you can probably are answering, you're yelling at your screen at this point, it looks a lot like an object. Hence the name in JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. This JSON stuff is gonna be written a lot like objects. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick look at this as we can. So if you have Lecture 17 already open, feel free to take a look at example.json. This is just one small example of what JSON can look like in a response body. What do we have in here? I'm just pretending like dates, uh, whatever the date that that stuff was sent over, if it was successful, true or false, maybe the location didn't exist and they're like, no, it's not successful, false. The request one, it was my first request. And in this case, nothing about whether it's really just dogs because of course I had to put dogs in there somehow because you know, I'm Kyle, so whatever. This right here is a JSON response example. And I really wanna point out one thing too, is that we have multiple data types, just like we had in objects. Nothing really here has changed too much. And as you can see, a date is a string. The successful is a Boolean. Request is a number. Dogs is an array of objects. And inside those objects, we have more keys with more data values. This is an object. It shouldn't look like anything new. It just has a slightly shinier name now. So this right here is JSON. It's what we're gonna be working with when we get responses back from APIs from here into the far future. I work with responses every day. I work with JSON every day. It is going absolutely nowhere. It is a beautiful language and beautiful response stuff. And I see some people shaking their head and like absolutely, it is an awesome, awesome, awesome way to store your data and transfer it. So real quick, I'm gonna unmute everyone and feel free to yell at me with any questions that you have before we continue on. Anything at all. Is Batman Clark Kent? Is he? I don't know. Very, I'm stumped by that question. Absolutely stumped. I don't know. 
I feel like this is a trick question. Does that have something to do with JSON somehow? No, um, sir. You just said anything. That is true. That is true. Touche. I, yeah, wow. All right. Touche. Anything we've been covering, I will now put a caveat on there. Anything at all, everybody. Johnny, did you have a question? Uh, what does API stand for? Application Programmable, inter or a pro application programmable Interface. <laughs> oh, what is, oh, did I mess it up again? I always get the P. Application programming, programming. Interface. programming interface. Thank you. Application programming interface. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So that uh, anything under any other questions? Any other questions at all? I have a I have a question. Um, it, would you use like a similar structure when like trying to fetch stuff from a database? So we're not really getting into beta databases just yet. No, this is not going to be a similar way we're going to fetch from data or get from databases. APIs, if you really do want to know, APIs are actually, your computer's here. The API is the layer between the database. So my computer can never directly access a database. That would be unsafe because I don't want to get any bank account information. Instead, we have an API layer right in the middle. So no, there's actually one more way or one more thing we have to learn about before we start getting the databases. But great question. Thank you. It is definitely, yeah, absolutely. All righty. Any other questions? Otherwise, we're going to hop in and we're going to see an example of this. So I'm going to go over here and grab this for a second. And I want to show you all what we're going to be working with today on our browser. I'm going to push this down here for a second. Press one. So if you don't know what this URL is, it is something that we have been working with um, in this particular chapter. You can find it in your chapter. It's inside the lecture or it's inside the launch code uh, chapter for, for this current lecture. So if you find that, press enter here and I wanna show you something. This is what we're gonna be working with today. Nothing really too fancy, but this is a very simplistic JSON. So what I also just did is I right clicked and I pressed inspect and it opened up my coder window on the right hand side, my developer window. So what I want to show you is that I'm going to go over here four tabs over to the network tab and I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page. I see here that I just got my weather.json back. This is showing me my get request for the weather.json and the response back. How do I know that? I'm going to go in and see this. I'm going to expand it just a bit more so we can all see it together. All right. So we can go in our headers, which is just the thing that the meta information, the information that's like on, on an envelope, like what address is it going to? Who is it going to? Is it Mr. or Mrs. Smith? Whatever. Those are the headers. That's the header stuff. So we have the URL. Where's it going? We're going to go send out a get request to this URL right here. Next is the status code, 200. You always want to see 200. That means everything went swimmingly. So, and then of course the remote address, which we see this is a this is an IP right here. And then the referrer policy, which we're not going to talk about. It's a little bit about security. What we care about is this response stuff. We see the response headers and then the request headers. So the response, like, okay, we don't really care too much about any of the headers. Like, okay, cool. It's connection stuff. I don't want to hurt my mind. So I'm going to go ahead and see my response here. So I go over from headers, preview. You go to preview too if you want to make it look a little bit prettier. But then the response. When I sent my get request over, I got this response back. I got this JSON. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I want to make sure. So this is a way that you can kind of test out these URLs and see, all right, I sent out the request, it's successful. What did I get back? So this is our first step into seeing stuff. So I really want to show you that. Remember, that's under the network tab. If you're ever just curious, it can also help you debug as you move forward into these talking to API problems. All right. Let's hop back over. I can find it. There it is. All right. So one more thing I want to throw out about JSON is that though it is close to an object, we need to make sure that we are also including our quotes here on the keys. JSON needs quotes on keys, aka it needs to be a string. So it's going to be different from objects. In JavaScript, we didn't ever have to put those quotes on the key itself. We just had to put it here. Or so in JSON, we had to put it here. So that was my final little thing about that. So I'm going to go ahead and now we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're actually going to do with all this stuff. Okay, Kyle, you've talked to me about JSON, but how do we exactly get it back? I saw it on that nice webpage, but all right, I don't exactly know 
where you're going with this. So let's go ahead and bring back that request that we just talked about. We sent over the website.com stuff. We got our website back. Then we sent a request over, a get to that well, whether weather.json to our API and it sent us back information. How do we do that on websites? That is the question we're here to answer today. And the answer to that is that we use a thing called fetch. Fetch is how in JavaScript we use to go get information from an API after our site has been loaded. After our site has been loaded. So we're gonna go ahead and go through that. What it is, we use the keyword fetch. And then we're gonna place the URL for the API inside those parentheses. After that, we're gonna say dot then. And we'll talk about dot then in a little bit. And then we're gonna put in what to do after we go get the information from that URL. That's the response. That's all the information coming back from the API. And then just for fun, of course, we're just gonna console log that response so we know what we can see. All right, let's go ahead and see that in action. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to myco.js. Today, I have myco.js, and what I have is I've already added an event listener load here. Because again, I wanna only go get information after I have loaded, after I have loaded my website. So now what I'm gonna do is like I said, what keyword am I gonna use to go get information? I wanna go retrieve it. Can't think of any more synonyms for it. It's fetch, we're gonna use fetch. And then we're gonna put in, not this type, fetch type. And we're gonna go get that URL, which is right here. This is the URL that we're gonna need. So I place the URL right inside of there. So this is gonna go and fetch that information. I wanna do then, or after this, I want to put in dot then. It's, we're chaining that, remember. You can put dot another function. We're chaining these functions. So after fetch, this dot then will run. Inside of this then, it's gonna have a response after it. So we're gonna say function, and the response, and then I'm gonna do something in here. I'm gonna go ahead and console log our response. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and see what actually happens. Let's go ahead and open my index.html. VLAN finder, double click. It's gonna open up Safari as always, but I don't like Safari, so hurry up. This is what we're gonna be working with today. Let's go ahead and go back over to Chrome. I'm gonna paste it in here, and there we go. All right, so we don't see anything different on our screen. What we're gonna do is go into inspect, click console, remember right click inspect, and then we come to console and see what was responded with. Remember, what we did here was if we go back to myCode.js, is that we console logged our response. So in here, the thing we have is this response class, this giant response object. You see a lot of stuff in here. You see a body that's called a readable stream. We have the headers, we already talked about headers, the status 200, that means everything went okay. But I'm not seeing any JSON. I'm not seeing any JSON. That's because what is happening is that it's hiding in this body here hiding in the body. So our JSON is locked away inside of this class. Now hold on here because this is gonna be a kind of a tricky part. And what I want you to really focus on is how we're just going to unlock the JSON from this response. We are able to get back this response class. It has a lot of good information in it, but our JSON isn't really accessible. So we're gonna do some magic here. We're adding another function to get it working. So what I'm gonna do in here, is that we're gonna do response, because that's all of the stuff inside of there, dot JSON, and then we're gonna do dot then. And then in here, function, I'm gonna say response JSON, just because that's gonna be the parameter that I'm looking for. And what I'm gonna do now is take that console log, place it in here, and let's go and see if we have now unlocked the JSON from our body. Let's go back over here, we're gonna refresh, and now we have successfully unlocked JSON from that body by just placing those lines in there. So now we see our chance of precipitation, status, temp, all of that. So again, how we did that was we placed this inside of the then. But truly what the real key is to unlock our JSON is using this JSON open and close parentheses. That's what it is. So this is how we have successfully unlocked it. And this is how we can actually begin to start working with our stuff. Now, 
Isn't this just fetch? So we need to go ahead and we need to talk about some stuff before we keep moving on because this, what we just got into is pretty, pretty interesting. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm not missing any questions. Hello quotes, only on Jason, correct. Uh, Regan, you are absolutely correct. Please go back to the code. Melanie, if you need to get the code, remember it's under lecture 17. I can go back to it for just a little bit here. Um, but remember, it's under our lecture questions at the very top. It will be right in those files, but here we go. So what we're gonna go over is a little bit more something, is that we're now going to learn real quick before we move on. Ooh, what am I gonna do first? Uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna show you something about what we just did. And I wanna show you some secrets of JavaScript before we continue on. So I'm gonna place this, console.log.im here. All right, something very simple. So what have I always told you since the beginning of class? Coding always goes sequentially, 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 sequentially. And today, that why this is why I'm very happy we're teaching virtually, because today is the day that I feel like I would get stuff thrown at me for thinking that I am lying to you. But what I wanna show you here is something very, very interesting about our language here and all languages in general. So if we go sequentially, technically, console log, the response JSON should come back before line nine. But let's go ahead and see what happens here. If we refresh this, we see that I'm here comes before the response. What exactly is going on? Why is I'm here, that's on line nine, coming back before it's on line six? Last time I checked, six is before nine. So I wanna to talk to you about something that's very, very peculiar, peculiar, cool about JavaScript and also all languages. Ah, that's so fetch, isn't that funny? God, Kyle, you're just so funny today. I know, I know, stop. All right, so. Before we dive into how I just probably angered half the class about what I just showed you, let's go ahead and talk about something even more uninteresting. Let's talk about laundry. Say you as an individual just came back from a trip and you have three giant loads of laundry that you need to do. Now, I only have one laundry machine. So if I was to do these three loads of laundry, I have to do each one one after the other and wait as each one is being done to move on from there. And eventually I get to my third one. This is completely fine because I only have one washing machine. And what just happened, what I just did was something that I just did my laundry synchronously. I just did it one after the other, doing one thing at a time. I did my first load, then I did my second, and then I did my third. And this is called synchronous. This is fine. But luckily, JavaScript gives us another tool to do something even cooler. What do I mean by that? Well, hypothetically, what if I said I had now three, low, or three washers instead of one? Well, if I have three washers, I can do all of that laundry at once. All of those are being done at the same time. When this is being done at the same time, it's called asynchronous, doing multiple tasks at once. We're able to do multiple things at one time. If your computer could just do one thing at one time, how slow do you think your computer would be? It'd be pretty, pretty miserable to have only one thing. Hence why your computer right now is doing hundreds upon hundreds of things, because those tasks are being ran asynchron uh, asynchronously. So why am I telling you all this? I wanna to explain to you exactly what just happened in that fetch situation that we talked about, because it will make a big difference in your coding. We all started up here when we saw that code begin. What's gonna happen when it hits this fetch is that fetch is very, very, uh, very interesting because it's gonna return, or it's an asynchronous method. It's an asynchronous function, meaning that it wants to run on its own. It wants to do its own thing. And hence what happens is that your JavaScript application will come down here and be like, this fetch will say, hey, keep going, I'll wait for this to finish but fetch wants to do its thing, but I don't want to wait for it. So what happens is that JavaScript separates into two different tasks at this point, two different runners, if you will. And in this case, what's happening is that this is running asynchronously now. Fetch though is going to take longer because it has to go out into the internet, find that website with, between all of them, and then bring back that information. 
at the same time, task two is taking, or is completely fine because it takes a few milliseconds to do, do a console log. So what am I saying about this? Task one is gonna take forever in computer time. And task two is gonna take a, like a millisecond. Hence why we see task two completed, or I'm here pasted first before task one is finished. Again, this is called asynchronous. And what's gonna happen after that to continue going on is that task one, whenever it's done fetching the information, it's gonna go down to the console log and then paste its stuff. This is asynchrony. These are different tasks running at the same time. And this is what gives programs, computers, its true power. We can run and do hundreds of things on our computers at once because of this concept. That's what this is all about. Now, the big thing I also want to talk to you about and things that you'll see in your reading and things I'll discuss in the future, is the things called promises. Promises are returned back from asynchronous methods, AKA fetch. As of right now, fetch is our only asynchronous method that we've discussed so far. So it will return me back a promise. What exactly is a promise? It's like asking your washing machine, like you promised to be, you promised to finish your load of laundry. It's like, yes, I will eventually finish, but please wait until I do. That's what a promise is saying. A promise is an object, a thing we can actually wait for in programming. Hence why they're so important. So going back to our code here, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I get any questions. So going back to our code here, this is what is happening as we run this. Line nine is gonna finish first because this stuff is gonna take longer. Coding still goes sequentially, but it might throw you off sometimes because asynchronous methods are out there. And the fetch one is a very big one and an important one. So don't be riled by if you see things printing out in the wrong order. It could just be because, and most likely is, because the asynchronous aspect of JavaScript. All right. So last thing I want to show you before I have to let you all go is that we're going to now use, now that we have understanding about asynchrony, I want to show you one more thing about the JSON and how we can manipulate our HTML in order or with this JavaScript. So, as always, to get something out of our HTML, we need to use document. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to update the ID here, or this div, using the ID with all of this JSON. So what I do is go to my code. I go to document.getElementById, and then I paste in that element that we just had. There we go. Let my weather div equal that. And now I want to actually set information inside of this div. To do that, I want to set more HTML inside of it. So I say my weather div dot enter HTML equals, and then I'm going to use ticks here just to help me out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to just put the, the status of the weather in H3 just to make it like, okay, I want to know if it's sunny. I want to know if it's partly cloudy. So I do that. And then I do my dollar sign because we're inside of string literal. I'm going to say response.json, response, sorry, response JSON dot. And now we have to actually go see what that was. What was that? So if I come over here, it was status. So I'm going to say dot status, just like an object. We get it stuff, we get that stuff out just like an object. Plus H3. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on another line here just for better readability. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just put a few more in here. I'm gonna say paragraph, I'm gonna say dollar sign, response.json, or geez, response JSON dot, and then let's see another one. Let's go ahead and do the temp. Temp, and I'm gonna put an F after that, slash P. There we go, I'm gonna save that. Let's see what happens. We come back over here, go and refresh the weather station, and look at that we have successfully pulled in information from a source on Launch Code, of course, far away to our website. We're now using data on our website, utilizing Fetch, as well as using our document to manipulate it after the page is loaded. This is the power of Fetch, and this is how we can use document DOM manipulation in order to show this information on our website in real time. 
And this is how your sports, how your weather, how your banking information is all displayed in today, in today's web. Which I really do find one of the more interesting parts about the web is finally when you get into the data, because there's a lot of data out there for people that people want you to play with. So this is just the beginning steps into getting into that kind of fun domain. So that is all I have for you all today. So I hope this was fun for everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and go into participants. And what I'm gonna do, allow you all to unmute yourself and I can take a few questions here just for a minute or two. So um, when you create your function, um, how can we take out one of the ending parentheses? <laughs> Um, so which parentheses are you talking about? Um, the one after response, J well, there was a second one after response JSON. So uh, there should never be one here. You should always have an opening and closing parentheses, as always, on our functions. That's definitely important. And then don't forget about these open and close parentheses. Every parentheses should always have a partner. So it, my screen might have uh, glitched out or something, but no, those parentheses should always have an opening and closing. Oh. Kyle, for this, um, yeah, we know. the response, you have the function response and then you have the response JSON part. Is the response JSON part, was that just an example for this or is that pretty standard to how we'll be doing things always? It is pretty standard to do this in all the examples you'll be doing in launch code in unit one. So response.json okay. will unlock the JSON out of this endpoint here. So yes, you'll be wanting to do this and then the dot then. This portion right here is extremely important, for sure. Great question. Okay. Hey, Kyle. Hey. <laughs> I think I heard Mark first. What's going on, Mark? Are there any other, uh, <clears throat> this is looking ahead a little slightly. Are there any other methods to res uh, response or the response class that um, we should sort of be paying attention to or looking ahead to? As of right now, the only one you're gonna be wanting to work with is JSON. Um, your responses will be working. We'll be working with primarily with the body, uh, I believe, from uh, in unit one. So, nope, just pay attention to that dot JSON at this point. A great question. <laughs> unit two will be getting a lot cooler stuff, too. That's not to say this, this isn't cool. I like this stuff. I use special all the time. Did we do a promise example? Kind of, uh, kind of, sort of. The promise example, uh, we would go get the promise. So, the fetch is returned from the promise. But no, I apologize. I did not do a promise example. Um, I can definitely put one in my next lecture for sure to get that out there. Kyle, is it helpful to set up uh, a function to be your fetch and then a uh, function response instead of typing that out every time? Or is that necessary each time? I, I would usually say with these, you're gonna wanna put it in the dot then. You're gonna wanna do it in this format. Um, it, I, it is at least the standards I work with and have been working with for quite some time. Um, but yeah, you're gonna wanna do anonymous functions. You won't wanna do named functions for this. Okay. Great question. All right, any other questions? All right, I'm trying to think of a good promise example. I mean, I guess we didn't really show, I wanna show you in a project. Problems object real quick. Let's undo that. All right, so like I said, let's do that real quick. My promise. So like I said, fetch always responds with a promise. So let's go ahead and just see what a promise looks like. Console.log, I promise. Let's go and refresh this real quick. And there we go. So you see in this project or this promise, it says pending. Pending means that the promise has not come back yet. That promise is still out in the abyss somewhere trying to find the, the book or the planets or the weather that you want to go find. That's what pending means. So what we need to do in order for this to finish is that needs to be waited for. So if we have an await, and I don't exactly know which promise example we want to do, if we want to do an await example or if we want to do how we do in resolver, um, but what you want to do is, oh, I don't even know if you can do that with, technically you can't. So I'm trying to figure out, let me do this. So we can do my promise dot then, 
do that. Let's see. Okay. So, I mean, that, that would be my closest thing I would get to a promise. I have to double check the book and I don't want to get too, too deep into the to promises because we can do resolvers for sure. But I don't re recall that being a part of, part of the stuff. So, um, yeah. But if you ever want to do that, I'd say a deep dive. If anyone wants to look more into promises, go and Google resolvers, promise resolvers in JavaScript. That stuff is fun as well. And it's definitely helpful with API endpoints and Node and uh, a lot of heavier header languages like that. Um, so if you're curious. But I don't want to give you all a headache right before your studio. So if you do want to see a, a specific example, direct message me and let me know what you want to see. Rejected promises. So yeah, we're going to be talking about resolvers then. I will definitely, I can throw one into the next lecture and we'll talk about resolvers. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that today. So uh, Ashton, we'll, I'll reach out to you and we can see what we can do about that because I want to see what you want to see specifically. All right. In that case, everyone, um, I will be, let me see, I think we, yeah, we're all done here. So I'm going to stop sharing. So I wanted to go a little bit later on this lecture just because we've been hitting it pretty heavy in the past ones. So that is all I have for you. Uh, remember, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. tonight, Bree will be doing the studio review, but I will be putting out a video tomorrow for the review also with me. So, um, and then I believe I'll hopefully grab that video from Bree as well. Um, but other than that, happy Monday, everyone. Thank you very much for making it here and hanging out with me all, all of lecture. But that is all I have for you today. So I will let you all go. Enjoy fetching. And I will see you all back here on Thursday.